Hey guys, this is Adam and today I want to give you a quick introduction to Azure Cloud Shell, a tool that I'm using on pretty much daily basis. It doesn't matter if I'm scripting, doing operation tasks, maybe DevOps or building scripts for you guys for those videos, I'm using Cloud Shell. It cannot be really stressed how good this tool is, so let me just show you. So Azure Cloud Shell is your cloud hosted shell environment and the key concepts around this is first of all, this is your tool to perform pretty much any common task you can do in Azure from operations, scripting, deployments and even automations. I'm pretty much preparing most of my scripts in the Cloud Shell and I'm testing them there as well. What I like about Cloud Shell is that when I write script in Cloud Shell, I'm sure that anyone who will also use Cloud Shell will execute it correctly without need to install any tools. And this is on daemon environment, so it's not like a typical Azure resource when you need to provision it, select resource group and then pay for it. It's on daemon, so whenever you call it, a dynamic environment is set up, you can use it and as soon as you're done, it will go away. And this environment is fully managed by Microsoft and what is good about it, it's totally free. Well, the environment is free, but you need to still pay for storage account that will be attached to this so that you have persistent storage across your sessions. And let me explain you how this works. User when connecting to Cloud Shell can choose from one of the many interfaces. In today's presentation, I'm going to focus on six interfaces that you can use to use Cloud Shell. And it's pretty good reason to use Cloud Shell because you can actually fit it in your daily workflow depending on interface that fits the scenario. When the first request comes in, Microsoft creates a Linux container with an Ubuntu image which can be used to create a script using either PowerShell, in this case PowerShell Core since this is a Linux, or Bash. And you can use a bunch of tools that are bundled with this image. But there are no licenses, no cost in cure for this. So as long as you are using, you have this environment to use and script on. One thing that you need to do is attach persistent storage so that your scripts, files, metadata that you're using across multiple sessions will persist because otherwise Microsoft as soon as you're done scripting will take away this environment and if you wouldn't attach this storage account you would lose all the files and all the data. One thing to note is that while this environment and this Linux container is from Microsoft owned Azure cloud you need to attach your own storage account from your own cloud so you're gonna pay for it but the licenses um, are not there so the only cost is the storage amount and the image of the disk for the Cloud Shell is very small, so the costs are pretty much negligible. So let's talk about how can you access Cloud Shell. There are multiple ways I'm going to go through each one of them. First one is Azure Portal. And inside of Azure Portal, accessing Cloud Shell is fairly simple. Inside of the Azure Portal, just simply click on the Cloud Shell icon and the pop-up will come up. If you never ever used Cloud Shell before, the first thing you need to do is storage mounting process. And you can do it twofold. Either simply hit create storage just by selecting a subscription, but this requires you to have privileges to create new resource group and new storage account with a default configuration. If you're working for external clients with external subscription, if you have limited privileges, you can use advanced settings to pretty much specify to either create within specific resource group or create and use existing storage accounts. In this case, I'm gonna hide advanced configuration to show you the default configuration for the Cloud Shell. So the thing that will happen right now is a new resource will be created and a storage account within that resource group. So let's wait for that. And we're done. For the first time when you're configuring it, it will also tell you where did it create that resource group. So as you see, there's a new resource group called Cloud, Shell, Storage, West Europe, the name of the storage account and the name of the file share. This is pretty much where all the persistent files will be residing. Let's hide this for a second and notice that you have three options here. You have minimize, maximize and a close. If you hit close, you release the resources and the environment from Microsoft. So you're going to lose all the temporary variables, but you can minimize it to keep the session open. I will go to my resource group to open newly created Cloud Shell resource group and open the storage account. And within that storage account, you can go to file shares. And this is where your disk image will later appear. But for now it's empty since we didn't do anything yet. So let's go into Cloud Shell. And now let me talk about the UI here. First of all, you can choose from the language. So either choose Bash or PowerShell. Remember there's a PowerShell core, so it's a tiny bit different than usual. 
But if you switch to it, it will ask you because of course you're gonna release the currently used environment. But when you confirm, it will switch to the new environment using Cloud Shell in PowerShell. And after a minute of initialization, it's done. Sometimes this gets stuck for a minute, so just wait for it and don't worry about it. So let's go back to bash because I have few examples there. And in here you can use bash, Azure CLI to perform your automations, like you can list your currently used accounts, or maybe create new resource group called MyRG in West US. That's done, that was simple. So maybe something more complex. Let's create a virtual machine called MyVM inside of this My Resource group using Ubuntu LTS and generate SSH keys locally. So let's run that. That was also very simple. And we can verify our results by going to the resource group, finding our new resource group and the virtual machine inside of it. That was fairly simple. But this is not what Cloud Shell is about, this is what CLI is about. So what else can Cloud Shell do? For instance, you can now SSH to this machine. By going here, typing SSH, you can connect to this virtual machine. And the way it did it, it created a new SSH key in your home folder. So you can just type Adam, add, and then press the public IP of this virtual machine. So just paste it here and press enter. This will use locally stored SSH key to connect to that virtual machine. And this is how simple it was to connect and do something on virtual machine. As you see, there are no files, but right now you were able to connect to Linux virtual machine that you created in Cloud Shell in just minutes. So let's exit that. You can now delete this virtual machine using pretty much the same command, az group delete and adding no way so that it doesn't block your shell when running this command. There are a lot of more cool stuff that you can do in Shell, for instance, calling REST API using your local session, because Cloud Shell is automatically logging into Azure whenever you start the environment. You can use this to call any API. As you see, I was able to call Graph API to get my current profile just by typing a simple REST URI command and it used my current session. There are plenty of cool scenarios when testing internal APIs using Azure REST and Cloud Shell. But for now, we're gonna leave it at this. Let's switch to some of the examples using PowerShell. So let's switch to PowerShell. And for PowerShell, it's pretty much the same stuff. Automatically logged into Azure, so ready to, to use PowerShell commands like get Azure resource group and select resource group names. And this way you can get the list of resource groups in just a second. It didn't require you to do anything at all. Just type a command, run it, and you're ready to go. As you see, my RG is still deleting, therefore it's still returned by this command. All right, so what else can you do in a PowerShell? Since this is a not a tutorial on Azure PowerShell, I have a separate video for that. I'm not gonna focus on what exactly can you achieve using PowerShell. One interesting thing to note is that there's one additional feature that you can use in PowerShell that is missing from Bash. And this is pretty much by typing cd azure slash so it's like a drive that is called like azure and what does it really do if you do it you're gonna get moved to something called azure and this drive doesn't really exist but if you type there notice something interesting it will return that the current directory is actually your azure subscription i was very confused at start when using this but I quickly realized it imitates your folder structure based on the resources in Azure. So what you can do, for instance, you can do CD and do Visual Studio Enterprise. So go to your subscription and then do dir again. Notice now it gives you ability to talk to about all resources, resource groups. So let's try all resources. Right now, if you type dir, Notice that it returned all the resources in your resource group and actually in entire subscription, not only one resource group. If you go back and go, for instance, CD resource group and now do dir, it will return what are the resource groups in your subscription. And this pretty much will go deeper and deeper into each resource, each resource provider. And this pretty much also imitates the structure of your Azure subscription. So if you go to resource groups, 
and inside of one of those resource groups, notice the URL on the top. It says slash subscription, slash the ID of the subscription, slash resource groups, and the slash name of the resource group. And this is pretty much the same here in the shell. If I would go CD to one of those logic apps, for instance, this SQL demo, notice that this URL represents the URL on the top from this part. So it's pretty much going down and down. And if you go there, it will always resource the providers and you can go deeper and deeper. Well, I personally don't use that feature too much. I think it's a clever idea, although I didn't find much use of it. I still prefer just writing the scripts. So let's go back to home directory for our user. So this is pretty much where you work on your files and you can work on pretty much any file just by typing echo hello world and directing it to file. And this file will persist and it will persist in both if you connect using bash or PowerShell and it will be located inside of the storage account that you created. So let's go back there and see what is happening. If you go to Cloud Shell, open the storage account, open the file shares. Notice that there is a file share right now that was created. The quota is six gigs. And if you open it, you can see the files from Cloud Console and there's ACC Adam IMG, which is the virtual image for your drive. So what are the options besides Azure Portal? For instance, you can use a dedicated website called shellazure.com. And to access that website, simply go to shellazure.com, press enter, and it will ask you, first of all, what is your directory if you're working on multiple ones and simply log you to the same experience as before. It is still the same cloud shell with the same feature, but you get more real estate in here. You can also change font here if you want to. And to do that, simply click on the settings icon here and change the font size. You can also change the font face if you want to, but that's pretty much it. With this button here, you can either upload files from your local computer to a cloud shell or download them from the cloud shell to your local computer if you need to. Additionally, you have icon here to create folders and access text editor if you want. An additional option that you have for accessing cloud shell is from Visual Studio Code. You can actually install extension within Visual Studio Code that you should have anyway, and then use the cloud shell from the Visual Studio Code itself. It's very convenient. And let me show you how to do that. First of all, from the extension part, you need to have Azure extension installed. So the Azure account extension. When you have it and you're logged in using your own account, like here, Adam at Marchak.io, then I can access Cloud Shell. And to do that, I simply press F1 and type Cloud Shell. And as you see, I can either open Bash or PowerShell or can even upload files directly from Visual Studio to Cloud Shell. So let's open this in Bash. Select directory, I'm selecting my default directory. And as you see, within just a couple of seconds, I am able to list my resource groups inside of my Azure subscription. And again, I didn't have to specifically open any command prompt, any login screens, because I was already logged in here within Visual Studio. This is a very convenient way to do that. Also, I don't know if you ever noticed, but when browsing PowerShell and CLI documentation, there's this try it button next to each command, and you can use it to open embedded Cloud Shell environment within documentation right away. And to do that, simply go to documentation. For instance, this is documentation for CLI. And in here, you can go to get started section and just browse to any kind of command here. As you see, every command has this try it button. So let's try this. AZ network and SG help. This will display the help for network security groups. When you press try it, it will open new cloud shell window. Again, select the directory. And within just a couple of seconds, you're ready to go. Paste in the command and testing and done. It's as easy to do that. If you're doing guided tours from documentation, Cloud Shell is amazing for learning purposes because on the left hand side, you have this documentation that you read through. On the right hand side, you have Cloud Shell and you just paste commands and learn Azure very, very quickly and very effectively. So what else? Since we already know that you can use all those things, 
What you can also use is Windows Terminal. This is pretty much a new feature. So if you're a Windows user, you can install Terminal. A Terminal is like an advanced Windows Terminal, but it has additional feature. And one of those feature is Azure Cloud Shell. And you can open new Cloud Shell window directly in the Terminal. And in here, you need to copy this URL, device login, which is Control Shift C, paste it into the browser, and then go back and copy the code. Again, Control Shift C, and paste it into the browser to establish session. Select the account that you're currently logged in, and you can close this browser and go back to the terminal. And again, select the directory. Do you want to save for the future? No. And AZ group list. And we're pretty much there again. We now again logged into Azure, this time from local prompt on our Windows operating system, and you're ready to execute Azure command this way. As you see, there's many options, so let's talk about another one. And for the last option that I want to show you is using Azure Mobile App. You can actually install Azure application on your mobile device and simply press Cloud Shell to access the same terminal. This is recording from my own personal mobile, and as you see, it was fairly easy for me to list resource groups within my subscription. Of course, this is not the most convenient UI for you to use, although if you are commuting and you need to quickly do something in Azure, this gives you an option to do so. If you have scripts ready on your Cloud Shell drive, you can simply execute them this way. It's very convenient, although it's probably not everyday use kind of situation. And with Cloud Shell, if you need to do a quick authoring like editing files, reviewing the contents, maybe adjusting your ARM templates or your scripts, you can do it inside of the Cloud Shell as well with something called Monaco Editor. It's like a small child of Visual Studio Code. It doesn't have as many features, but it definitely gets the job done if you need to do a quick editing. And to access it, go back to Cloud Shell, maybe create demo folder, go to that demo folder, and open Cloud Editor by typing code dot for the current folder. And if you want to start editing and authoring some files, maybe type code storage.json. This will open the current storage.json file where you can paste, for instance, your template for Azure Resource Manager. Now that you have the template in, you can simply run the script in PowerShell to deploy that to Azure and run it. And in just a couple of minutes using Cloud Shell, I'm able to create ARM templates, deploy them to Azure to get my infrastructure in place and at really no effort. And I can simply pass those scripts to my colleagues and they will be able to execute it. And this is not where it ends. With Cloud Shell, you get a lot of additional features. For instance, you have a lot of build tools, Linux tools, Azure tools like CLI, Azure Copy, PowerShell, Git, code editors like Vim, Nano, Besides, of course, the Monaco, you have ability even to execute Terraform and Ansible scripts or work with Docker, Kubernetes, Helm, a lot of a lot of tools that are out of the box for you to use. So really just spend a couple of minutes, learn it, learn all the tools it has, take advantage of it because not only it's free, but it's accessible from pretty much anywhere and it can fit pretty much any workflow. Azure Cloud Shell pretty much perfectly fits into my daily routine. I can perform most of my operational tasks just from the browser window or maybe another tool that I like, but it's up to you to decide if it fits in your workflow. If it does, hit a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more and definitely see you next time.